This is KGW News at Sunrise. This Saturday morning, there's new technology to fight COVID-19. The local research working toward one treatment to block all the variants. Then major traffic changes were implemented this week along Southeast Powell Boulevard after a deadly crash involving a cyclist. But will it be enough? More on the new safety measures on one of Portland's most dangerous roads. Good Saturday morning to you. I'm Nina Melhoff uh, filling in for Tim Gordon and in for Chris McGinnis. Rod Hill in the Weather Center. It is a reunion, you know, once you uh, think you're out, they pull you back in, right? Nina's back to work. <laughs> I'm here on a Saturday. Here we go. All right, we have scattered areas of precipitation statewide. Everybody literally looking at a sunbreak scattered shower heavy at times forecast. There's a heavy shower right now outside of a battleground a slip. Everything's moving from north to south southeast, by the way. And a reminder, some of these heavier showers could produce hail. You might hear a rumble of thunder. Check this out. It goes in the books as the first accumulating snow of the fall season up at Timberline. They have two inches uh, on the ground and it's still been snowing up there more than not. It is above freezing and the pavement is nice and clean when you get down to government camp. But if you're traveling over the high country, just keep uh, apprised of what's happening. There could be some icy roads develop up over the Cascades, especially going into this evening and overnight tonight. Here's a look. You can see the cloud cover in the city lights, uh, the Tilcom Crossing and the, the boat center at the Portland Spirit Landing. It's a, a dry downtown Portland right now, but we will get our fair share of showers today. 49 currently. Mid 50s for high tomorrow still looks completely dry. We'll have that seven day forecast coming up. All right, Rod, thank you. Now to the latest on the coronavirus. A CDC advisory committee is recommending the vaccine be added to their immunization schedule. That's essentially a recommendation to doctors on which shots their patients should get and when also for kids. Right now, it includes vaccinations for polio, measles, whooping cough, and tetanus. Speaking of COVID, there's a promising new research out there that could protect people from the virus. We're still a couple years away from being able to use it, but it is an mRNA treatment. Alma McCarty spoke with the Oregon State researcher about how it works. Building on years of research, medicine, and technology advanced under the pressures of the COVID-19 pandemic. You know, we were in a renaissance period. Uh, you know, I've been working with these technologies from 2014. Uh, but now we are in an industrial revolution because billions can be made. And as Gaurav Sahe, a pharmaceutical sciences researcher at Oregon State University, explains, his latest findings could become another tool in fighting COVID, one with future impacts. A lot tremendous potential that has been unleashed for a lot of different diseases. His team's work is twofold. First, they've found a way to block multiple COVID variants. It works by introducing so-called decoy enzymes to the body, which bind to the coronavirus spike proteins and prevent the virus from latching onto healthy cells in the lungs. Virus doesn't recognize the real place that it wants to enter, but goes into this decoy and is taken out of the system. And second, they found the treatment can be turned into an aerosol, like a nasal spray, and inhaled. Animal testing shows the results are promising. Pretty rapid. As soon as someone has COVID, within two hours, the protein will start forming and start doing its job and, and hopefully, you know, start making people feeling better. Alma McCarty, KGW News. Stock traffic now because there's big changes at a dangerous southeast Portland intersection. Both Portland City Council this week voted unanimously for immediate safety improvements. It's because in the past two weeks, one person died and a high school student crossing the street was hurt in crashes at Southeast Powell and 26th. So those immediate changes include 11 new school zone signs along Power, Powell and other locations near Cleveland High School. That drops the speed limit from 25 down to 20 miles an hour in that school zone on both streets. This week there was a meeting held at the school to talk about the changes and continuing improvements being considered. There's a lot of things that our teams are going to continue to work on, whether that's lane configurations that can help uh, to really reduce the amount of traffic or slow traffic down for longer periods through Powell, uh, or uh, even photo radar and other elements to really help enforce the speeds. 
The city says they're also working to add back the green bike lanes and bike boxes to 26th to make streets safer for cyclists. 17 people have died along the seven and a half mile stretch of Powell since 2017. And if you're headed out to the Portland airport this weekend, you need to know the max red line is not running today or tomorrow. It's part of TriMet's Better Red project. So this weekend, crews will be lifting and setting girders for a new light rail bridge at Gateway Green Park. There are lots of changes to travel, so make sure to plan ahead. You can ride the blue and green lines to the Gateway Transit Center. Then shuttle buses will take you to the airport. And if you're coming in from Beaverton, the blue line will run more frequently to replace that red line service. A new interactive art display is opening up in St. John's by a kind of well-known local artist. We'll show you what you can expect after the break.